50 now. That's great. All right, we'll start. Um, welcome everyone to um, all going to fix live uh, Facebook Live. We haven't done many of them. We used to do webinars. Um, this seems to be a, a better platform, more popular. Um, it's been a while since we've been been doing with since we've had one. We've just been busy this year. Thank God we'll be able to get get out there and do expos and things like that again. Like um, we've done three mind body spirits this year, which is fantastic. Last year we did one. The rest of them were banned. Okay, so this uh, Facebook Live is titled Beyond EMF. It's basically a summary of the last blog that went out called Beyond EMF. And the reason we are, or I am doing this is it's a bit of a favourite subject of mine. I've always been known for someone who talks about types of different types of radiation fields which don't fit into the normal building biology scope, which is about that much. Um, most people's understanding of radiation is your mobile phone, your Wi-Fi, um, your smart meter, your meter box. Um, some people have some knowledge of earth radiation, but what I find with the earth radiation knowledge on the internet, it's very old and it's as shallow as a waiting pool and um, completely wrong and misleading. Um, in my house consultancy work and most virtually all of my house consultancy work in Melbourne, where we live, is always for how, uh, energetic problems in houses that people have detected either through uh, gradual decline in their health or um, they're experiencing energies in the house because they're sensitive to them that they don't like or are bugging them or spooking some people in the house. And these energies cannot be measured with an EMF meter. When I say an EMF meter, most people, when they buy EMF meters these days, are, are buying radio frequency meters. And the type of radiation that we're talking about today is radiation that's not picked up by an EMF meter. And actually, a radio frequency meter reads radio frequency wave, which is not ionizing. If you do your research, just Google that ionizing radiation and non-ionizing radiation. Non-ionizing radiation doesn't have enough voltage, enough voltage in the air to cause electromagnetic stress on the Chinese meridians. Whereas ionizing radiation does, and what you read about ionizing radiation on the internet is a knowledge base of about that much when it's way out there. So there's a number of different types of ionizing radiation and ionizing radiation has enough voltage in the air to cause electromagnetic stress on the Chinese meridians, which then makes the vital organs sluggish or become diseased. So the ionizing radiation, there are a number of different types of ionizing radiation, which EMF meters generally do not pick up on. And they're the things we're going to talk about today. And these are the interesting things. These are the things that when I am at Expos or I'm doing a house consult or I'm doing over the phone readings that people are really fascinated about. It's an interesting subject. So the, the first one we'll talk about, and we won't go elaborately into them, and there are blogs on the website which give a little bit more detail. Um, I don't want to be talking for hours tonight. I want to go for probably about half an hour and some, and some questions on the end. So the first one is human-generated radiation. Human-generated radiation causes, um, can cause electromagnetic imprints in houses, and that is when we're physically ill, and there's been a lot of that lately, as we know, um, or when there's been a death on the property. And to explain the death on the property radiation thing, that's that gets a lot of a lot of people sparked up. Like, tell me more. What happens at the time of death is there's an emotional pain body charge, and that emotional pain body charge generates an electromagnetic imprint. It's a charged field about the size of a body um, that is ionizing radiation and the charge is so strong that it develops what's called a geoelectric current through the ground and that geoelectric current through the ground then generates earth radiation outside up out of the ground about 1.5 meters but inside a house that fully engulfs the house in radiation charge and so if you've had a death on a property and it could you could be living in a new house but someone's died on the land in the past or a very old house which has got a lot of history 
then you're going to have an entity in the house which is called a ghost and that's a whole different other rabbit hole and the ghost is can be seen as an, as an apparition i did a, had a house consult yesterday in melbourne where they had a, a three-year-old child who was they we would class as being psychic but young children are naturally gifted that way and young children are the ones who get spooked, spooked at night time by seeing apparitions which is just energy from the bioplasmic imprint and that's what you call the ghost it's not spirit not no way is it all spirit um you can have lesser degrees of human gener generated radiation as in if you've had someone very ill in a house over a long period of time where that person sleeps where that person sits at the kitchen table where they sit on the lounge if they're chronically ill over a period of time they'll leave energetic imprints on, on in those spaces so in a house consult what I one thing I do is I go room to room and I'm, I look at the energetics of the bed space or the energy above just above the bed space and that's really important because um, if no one's chronically ill in the house and there's a, an energetic imprint above the bed itself when I say the if that's the top of the bed there it's that space above it there if there's an imprint there and if no one's been chronically ill then it's being generated or caused by a previous occupant and the danger with that is that it's an information energy field and that information energy field what happens there is if you immerse yourself yourself in it as in go to bed and sleep in it you're under one electromagnet uh, electromagnetic stress two because it's an information energy field of all the information of that per other person's illnesses you could take on those same symptoms and I've seen many a situation over the last 20 something years where people have moved into a house and they're where they put their bed is where the previous people have had their bed and they come down with an illness and I say where, where did this come from I don't have that problem or this problem you know my GP or naturopath or whoever they go to is a bit, bit surprised as to what's happened and that's because of those imprints um, these days with uh, goings on over the last 12 months without saying things to incriminate me or anyone we I think we all know what we're talking about especially the people who watch are watching this the, I believe you I know you're all like-minded and you know what I'm talking about um, that creates another problem because those people are chron chronically ill without knowing that because of the immense stress on the immune system and that their bodies their human biofield energies is the worst that's ever been probably in history they leave imprints wherever they go in their houses also and they actually energetically infect other people but that's another rabbit hole and we'll address that um, soon via rumble just keep an eye out for that um, other forms of radiation which are beyond radiation which is another big area is earth radiation related to different types of earth magnetic grid lines and if you google earth magnetic grid lines or if you google geopathic stress which is a term given to earth radiation stress on the Chinese meridians and the human um, vital organs and animals too you'll you'll read that there are earth magnetic grid lines called Hartman grid and curry net and you'll read that those some, on some website they'll say oh, they'll be really dangerous and if you sleep over a crossing or like that of one or two or three or whatever that you're come, going to come down with an illness and that's actually not true those earth magnetic grid lines are only skinny little energy lines are about that wide the earth magnetic grid lines which again is ionizing radiation and is not measured with a meter and it's beyond radiation beyond emf there are larger earth, earth magnetic grid lines which do cause geopathic stress and they're in increments so to speak there's what they call the banker grid which is a grid that runs north south east west and i'm not blessing you um it's 1100 mil wide whatever and they do cause mild geopathic stress especially over the crossings which they call like that cube then beyond the um banker grid is what's called the 400 meter grid and the 400 meter grid same thing runs north south east to west they it's called 400 meter grid because it occurs every 400 meters and it's also a wall of radiation which has more charge to it 
than the banker group, which has more charge than the, the Hartman and Curry groups. So if you're sleeping in a situation where your, your desk is or your couch is or whatever, where there's a 400 metre grid line running through the house, then you're going to be encountering, encountering a much severer form of geopathic stress and you'll have more meridian acupuncture point interference and more um, vital organ stress. Um, if you're talking earth radiation lines, you can talk, we can talk the opposite to that, which is always beyond EMF. There are earth energy lines called ley lines and we've, we've covered this in the past. And ley lines to me, the best way to explain them is that the term radiation or ionizing radiation is harmful. It has a positive charge. Ley lines, I call not radiation, I call them radiance, which is the opposite to radiation. So they have a negative charge, which supports our health and well-being and supports our Chinese meridians and organs. And they, if you stand on them or within them, and if you can feel them, if you're energy sensitive, it will relax your nervous system. It will make you feel emotionally a lot better and just generally quite chilled in a sense. And there are different types of ley lines or different grid widths of ley lines. There's some which are about eight to 10 meters wide. There are some that are 20 meters wide, which will cover the width of a whole house. And then there's a grid of ley lines, which is 125 kilometers apart, sorry, which is a very big grid, which is these ley lines are about 80 meters wide. And to give an example, um, Stonehenge, for example, sits on a crossing of that ley line grid at um, um, 25 kilometers apart. So if you have a ley line running through your house, then you have that radiance and that will support your health and well-being. Um, if you have a ley line running through your house, it doesn't mean you don't need to have a harmonized, harmonizer like a geoclins or a stellodome or whatever, because the next thing I'll talk about is geoelectric currents which have a positive charge which is a current that runs across the top of the ground and just through the top of across the top of the ground above the ground sorry and just through the underneath of the ground those geoelectric currents knock out the ley lines and i mentioned geoelectric current before when we were talking about death on the property but there are other causes of geoelectric current um, the first one being from solar flares and CME. And I'll, um, there was a question that came in before we started, which asked about CMEs. And I'll an answer that question in a nutshell now. Um, or you can have it when we have things like what we've got going right now, and it's going to get worse tomorrow, is mercury in retrograde. So mercury in retrograde creates and, and when you have a CME and high, which a uh, CME from the sun, which is a coronal mass ejection, and which is coming from sunspots, which basically on the sun, which are facing the earth only, it's only when they're facing the earth, sorry, when the sunspots spots virtually explode out into the whatever, it sends charged plasma towards the earth. And then that causes a disrupt, disruption in the geomagnetic field around the earth, which then induces a ground current, which is a geoelectric ground current, which covers the whole earth. And that knocks out the ley lines. Um, this year is a very interesting year because we've had not had a single day where we haven't had sunspots facing us. And it's a really interesting subject that because with the goings on of earlier this year, in, which started in late February with the the um, devastating rains of the northern rivers and, and, and Queensland. There was a lot of talk that was engineered in some way, geo. And there's a lot of debate about that too. I, I'm open to the geo engineering and I fully understand it and or around it and have been for probably a lot longer than a lot of people since probably 1999. But my understanding of what a um, the retrograde can do causing the geoelectric current, which is a geomagnetically induced, or the solar winds, or the coronal mass injections can do, can also have a massive big impact on our weather patterns worldwide. And I'm beginning to see on Telegram and Facebook and different 
um, social media sources here and there, that there are more and more astrophysicists and people who really know, know a lot more about that stuff than me. I'm a building biologist who's gained that knowledge, which is rare for a building biologist. And they're starting to talk about it. They're starting to say, hang on, you know, GW doesn't exist. Look at the patterns, especially this year and the last couple of years, and as we're heading to what, what's called an, an, the next solar cycle, look at those patterns and understand how they affect our weather patterns, and, and that could be another reason behind it. But basically, when we have CMEs, which create um, solar winds of five, six, seven hundred kilometres a second, today it's been around 300 kilometres a second, so that's not impacting at all. When you have these very high solar winds and all the mercury retrograde, then you get the geoelectric current going worldwide. So everyone around the world, unless they're using a geocleanser, a stellar dome or a stellar pendant or whatever from us, everyone's under severe geopathic stress. I had a, I had a really interesting other experience yesterday. That's why I love my house consulting work because I, even though I, I know a lot without being a big, big note, I learn a lot and I'm always in, in environments where I've got my stellar domes and geocleanser and I'm wearing my, Pendant. I shouldn't show you this one, but I will. It's an upcoming new model, a white one, sparkly white. Anyway, um, in my house consults, I take my pendant off. I don't walk in with it on. And the reason for that is that I don't want to interfere with the energetics of the house so I can read it properly and demonstrate it to the, to the host. And during this consult, when I first started, there was no geomagnetic stuff going on, which was from the Mercury in retrograde. We completed the consult, we pulled the stellar dome out of the box, it did its stuff and neutralised everything that was going on from death imprints or whatever. Then that question came up of, you know, if we put take the stellar dome away, what would happen to the energy of the house? So I put the stellar dome back in the box, which deactivated it to see what happened. And naturally, all the imprints that were there beforehand, which were on this property, were from deaths and previous occupants, uh, bad health. It was a, large, a very old house, probably built in the 1930s which are the great ones for me. Um, naturally, the imprints didn't come back after we got rid of the stellar dome because the dome removed the imprints within 30 seconds. What came on was um, geoelectric current worldwide. It just started while I was doing the consult, while the dome was out. So when I, when I put it away, I distinctly felt the charge coming from the geoelectric current. And it was really interesting to me because it really reiterated to me how much stress the body goes into when you encounter those things. I, I was standing there thinking, whoa, I keep myself from being, I protect myself from this stuff all the time, 24 seven, all the time. It's only in my consults that I experience it. And I was going, wow, this is, you know, a bit of a, a reminder of, of how severe it really is. I'm reasonably energy sensitive, as in I've, I've taught myself that. It's something that everyone has. If you want to develop your sensitivity, you can develop that yourself. Okay. Um, another form of radiation that um, can't be picked up with a meter. And again, in building biology, because building biology is as shallow as a waiting pool, um, mold in roof cavities. And, you know, again, people have heard me, heard me talk about this in the past. And what does that mean? And it sort of goes beyond a little bit more beyond mold in a roof cavity. So if we start with mold and roof cavity, mold, it's a substance that's highly toxic and develops, has a positive charge. It develops its own radiation field. Um, so it does cause a lot of mold, electromagnetic stress on the Chinese meridians. But if you've got it in a roof cavity, and most, it doesn't have to be a roof like that. It can be a flat roof. They can get mold in there. And the mold usually gets there from leaky roofs over a long period of time and or more, more often from exhaust fans, which are pumping steam into the roof cavity and it can't go anywhere. I know in Victoria here, there is a law that says if you build a house these days, you must duct your ceiling fans to the outside environment so it doesn't get stuck in the roof cavity. So it gets into the roof cavity, it condenses, it's dark, it can't go anywhere, there's no ventilation and the mold growth starts. It's very, very fine, but if you stick your head in there, you'll smell it, it's quite obvious it develops a charge which projects down into the living space. And for people who are very sensitive to energy, and especially the 
Epstein Barr sufferers, and I've, I've said, said that time and time again, I'll still say that because I still encounter them probably five or six times a week with my online reading, readings where people are bugged by something. It's actually their own biofield because of the Epstein Barr. Those super sensitive people are really bugged by that charge coming down from the mold of the roof cavity, which is one reason why we recommend in that situation the Stellodome over the GeoCleanse. Um, another way a roof cavity, in a sense, can cause a radiation charge is that, um, for example, in Melbourne, in our older suburbs where there are old, I think they're called the Awardian houses with big, big pitch roof, roof lines, the, the thing to do is if you buy one of these old houses and renovate it is you'll, you'll put a staircase into that roof cavity and you'll line it with plasterboard, put some windows in and turn that into a living area of bedrooms or whatever. But what they're actually, what the, but the energy, the radiation charge in that, that shaped area, like well, it's short dado walls with pitch roofs like that, the energy there in that space is like being in the underside of a pyramid. And many, many, many years ago, for about a period of a couple of months, I built myself a copper pyramid and meditated underneath it. it gave me such a whopping headache and I got out of it really cranky. And that's the opposite to what you should be. You should be chilled. And it wasn't long till I, till I realised that the underside of, of a pyramid is a really dangerous place to be. If you ever happen to be in Melbourne or visit Melbourne, just go to the Shrine of a Remem Remembrance and go for a walk up to the gallery, which is a gallery which where you can walk out. It's a, a balcony around the top of the shrine, which is a base of the roof of the shrine, which is a pyramid. And you can look out over the garden. It's quite nice. But as you're walking up the stairs, you feel the lung, get, the air getting sucked out of your lungs because in a positively charged ionised radiation field, there's an increase in um, gravity, a decrease in oxygen with a negatively charged healthy field, uh, environment with a geocleanser or stellodome, there's a decrease in gravity and increase in oxygen, although very, very subtle, but it's enough to have an effect on the Chinese meridians, especially the heart meridian and the lung meridian. So as you're walking up to the gallery, you go, oh, I feel a bit queasy. That's because you're coming up into very close to the underside of that pyramid. So when you have those houses where they've Built, decked out the, the roof cavity to turn it into, into bedrooms, you've got a big radiation problem up there. And you know, I learned that a long, long time ago. And I remember 20-something you know, years ago with one of the, a very early house consult, which was one of those houses, and the, the host said, can you come upstairs and check the energy in the, the beds and the spaces in the bedrooms upstairs? And I walked up the stairs, and I'm standing at the top of the stairs, and I'm breathing really heavy, and she said, are you okay? I said, yeah, can't you feel the energy? And, and she was breathing heavy, heavily too, but she'd become accustomed to it. She wasn't aware of what her body was actually telling her. Um, we used a harmonizer. It was an older dome back then. Not, not nothing like the Stellar Dome, but it, it was enough to neutralize that charge up top. So when we have that situation, that's when that really comes in. Because some of the complaints about not being able to sleep and ill health from people who start living in those those loft areas which have been turned into living spaces when they when they first encounter them encounter them can be quite severe okay um i've got some notes here just cheating on the side that sort of covers most of it there could be a, a part b to this which will continue on later on i just want to cover some of the questions that came on earlier on i We've gone for half and almost half an hour now, and I, I, I said I wanted to keep it that. Um, Drew, we had some really interesting questions before we started, and one was about the CMEs, which we've, we've covered, and she also asked about CERN. And most people here would know what CERN is. CERN's the Hadrian Collider, which is built in a big circular tunnel underneath Switzerland, and I've been being very aware of the CERN, CERN and what it's all about for a long, long time. Like, you, you can't not be aware. And I became aware, and I only got this awareness through reading that part of the world with Google Earth. Every time CERN was turned on, everything within that racetrack, all that land, which is a huge part of Switzerland, 
come under geoelectric current and really, really severe ge um, geopathic stress. So to people who are living in that part of the world, the amount of geopathic stress that they're going to encounter, I know does cause cancers and other illnesses. I have a friend who lived in Switzerland, who's now living in Australia, who encountered severe um, health issues. I won't go into the details. Severe health issues, enough to have them on the phone to me going, what the... And they got out of town. Um, CERN was turned off for a while, a few years back, but it's turned back on again. Um, but that's a really, really, really good question because um, it's something that I have had, had do have some knowledge about and have uh, surveyed it in the past. And as I said, CERN's been turned on back on again. Um, um, another question came in about five G and something else going on. I, it's not appropriate to cover it now, and I don't want to get censored, Emily. So um, if you want an answer to that, you could probably just email me. But what will go up on BitChute will be all about that. It's the 5G and the GE from the carrots, if we know what I mean. I've just got to be locked up for this one because it's a public one. But um, that will come later. I've been itching to talk about that because I have a massive amount of knowledge about that. Um, our wholesalers have some information about that, which I've released, which we couldn't put on the website due to censorship. Um, but as time goes by, things will loosen up. But as I said, we're going to address that and we'll put on a, a platform that won't be censored. Um, um, I've got a question about FLFE. I've never heard of it. It's this person, Frank. Hi, Frank. Is is asking his question. He's calling 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 it focused life energy. If you want to give me more information, what you're talking about, I could be I could would be able to elaborate on it, but I don't exactly know what you're talking about because I've not heard the term before. Um, um, I don't have any other questions. Um, okay, here we go. Here's an interesting one from a Vanessa. Um, I sound like a an old. TV host, <laughs> terrible. Um, does radiation affect a person to a point of procrastination? Yeah, absolutely, spot on. That's a really good one. Um, radiation, by the fact that it has a, a negative effect on the Chinese meridians, will it have an effect on the vital organs? And a lot of the vital organs are endocrine organs, and our endocrine organs govern our hormones, which also govern our emotions, which will it mean that if you're in a house, let's say someone's died in the house, which we're going to have you know, a quite severe form of um, bioplasmic radiation, which engulfs the whole house with the geoelectric current and all that sort of stuff, then um, um, then it's going to have an effect on the on your emotions that's going to put you off stuff. I, I had, I'll had i give you a really good experience, a, a example of that. Last year, I had a house consult late in the year. And after that house consult, because I'd taken my pendant off, when I got back in the car, I didn't put it back on. So then when I, uh, the next thing I did after that consult was I went into my local shopping center to do some Christmas shopping. I was going to buy some presents for Leanne, my wife. I was like, well, beauty, I'll buy her this and that. Like I love, love surprising it. Anyway, I got there and I'm walking through and the, it was chockers through full of people and they're all um, of the current status energetically of what people are these day, due, days due to the carrot, um, which is a big problem. That I, because I didn't have my pendant, I was under severe geopathic stress and my stomach meridian went out. I got a bit of reflux. I felt really sick. And I got really depressed. I, like, I don't want to do any shopping. Yeah. Bugger this. I'll just go home. I went back to the car and I went, and, oh, sorry, before I went back to the car, I went, oh, shit, no pendant. Like I left it in the car. Bugger. Which was like, you know, smack on the head for that because it's really dumb of me to, to do things like that. So I went back to the car, put it back on. By that time, it was like too late. Just went home. Um, just another question 
just coming up. Um, oh, okay. This is an interesting one, Roma, regarding the, what we're talking about with the, with the house consult yesterday. Um, why do I feel, feel the effect of the solar burst yesterday, which wasn't solar, it was actually from Mercury retrograde, the same type of thing, it doesn't matter. When I put the stellar dome away, when you put the stellar dome in a box, it deactivates it, which is great. And what I was trying to demonstrate in the house consult was what after it had done its job initially of removing the imprints, which are the really dangerous energy fields in the house. And rem by removing the, the death imprint, the geoelectric currents um, um, disappeared. So all that energy had gone um, was to demonstrate what was happening. After that, we took the, the dome back out of the box and we put it in place. And where we put it in place relates to another question from very early on before we started. Where do you put a stellar dome? in a house. Well, it can be on any table. It can be on a table. It can be on the floor if you want to. It can be um, anywhere like that on any flat surface. It could be sitting in a bag sitting on the floor. Like we sell a lot of stellar domes to people who are working in workplaces where they need protection from the other people and the energy is there and they don't want to, say, plug a geocleanse in because you get, you know, skeptical people who don't understand who are a bit ignorant going oh what's that crap you know because there's that element always out there it's a problem i know it's not a problem it's just them so to go in stealth and i'm, I'm all about stealth if you want to for example if you don't wear it when we're a pendant you use the inner souls that does the same thing no one's going to know you, you've got insoles which are energized so if you've got the dome in a bag sitting on the floor or next to your desk it's going to be still doing everything it works through the bag it just doesn't like being in a box um, but yesterday in this consult, they had, um, a young child, young three-year-old, as I think I said earlier on, who was very inquisitive, like all three-year-olds. And he was a bit of an advanced three-year-old who, who was very aware of conversation and everything going on. He was a great little kid. And the suggestion was not to leave the dome somewhere where he could get it. Cause the beauty about the dome is that colors are really striking with the the reflector on the bottom, the special material we use to get that effect. And that's to amplify the bio, bio photon, which has a negative charge. Um, so what we did with it was we put it on top of a bookcase. You don't put the dome in a bookcase shelf because it's a similar sort of thing to being in a box. So we put it on top of the bookcase. So that way it's out of little three-year-old's reach and it's always there and always working. And it was, it was in, in a situation was where the, as I were walking out the door to go out as a family, they could just grab it and put it in the handbag or the bag and off, off they'd go. And wherever they go, it would give them protection throughout the, every, every building they go. Um, okay, I've got two more questions and then I'll finish up because I don't want to keep you here forever. It's beer o'clock for me too. Um, I like to keep these to about a half an hour to three quarters of an hour at the most, but we'll take a few more questions. Um, there's a question coming in. Oh yeah, okay. It's a question asking about from a JJ, the website I go to each day. So they've obviously heard me talk about this before to check the solar winds. And that's a website called spaceweather.com. Um, I'll repeat it again, spaceweather.com. It's a fantastic website. It updates the solar wind speed every hour. It goes, gives you a whole heap of other information beyond just the solar wind speed. It gives you the history of every year, of how many years, how many days in every year, back to the last 10 or 15 years, that we have not had sunspots. And from that history, you can see a really good example of what I'm talking about as we're going into this next solar cycle, because over the last few years, there have been less and less days where we've had no sunspots and no sunspots being, means that there's no geoelectric current worldwide unless it's coming from retrogrades. But if there's no retrogrades causing it, they're the days where people go, oh, it's a wonderful day, you know, whether it's blue sky or not, they're just feeling energetically good because you don't have this geomagnetically induced uh, uh, ground current, which is a geoelectric current. Um, Another question comes from Lee Troy. How are you, Lee? I think I met Lee. I caught up with Lee at MBS Brisbane a couple of weeks ago. Um, um, he wanted to know about going over the Chinese meridians 
with the ionic wand. Um, I'll answer that one. We've got a few more. We've got another 15 minutes, 10 minutes. For those people who don't know what the ionic wand is, I actually don't have one in front of me. Um, it's a polycarbonate rod about that long, which we developed many, many years ago, um, and it's energized. And I developed the ironing wand because back then, which was around 2010, there were a whole heap of wands coming coming onto the market, which were made out of stainless steel. They were selling for about two to three hundred dollars. They were complete garbage coming from people who are marketing companies, and that's a big problem these days with radiation products. Yeah, I could count on the right hand how many people in the world who make who sell harmonizers make harmonizers and sell harmonizers harmonizers are actually true building biologists there are very very few we're the only ones in australia the rest are all marketing companies except for one other but um they're all marketing companies so just be aware marketing companies are not experts in radiation and they wouldn't know harmonizers as far as if it hit them in the head um, nothing against marketing companies. We work with a great one, but marketing companies selling radiation harmonizers on their own, just be war just be careful. Um, I'd love to give some examples, but I really can't. Maybe for another day. If you want to contact me, I'll, I'll tell you. But the wand, um, the reason we do them in polycarbonate is because we first did them in glass and they all broke in the mail. It was a headache. So polycarbonate, you can't break. You might scratch it, doesn't matter. So how you use a wand is on the Chinese meridians. And oh, how am I going to do this? For example, on the left hand, that's your circulation meridian. And you run the wand up the arm and down, up and down a few times. On the central meridian from the coccyx up to there, you only run it in the upwards direction three or four times. You can do your governing like that. If you've got good flexibility, you go all the way down the back. Um, I'm reasonably flexible, I can do it. Uh, for women, the right hand is the triple warmer, which is your hormone meridian, up to there. Often when I see people wearing um, any type of wristwatch, um, whether it's battery powered or a Fitbit or, which, or an electronic type of tracking device or a watch, uh, like an Apple Watch and things like that, they're all great products, but they do have a radiation issue with them. Those types of products, and even uh, someone wearing a tight um, bracelet, like a metal bracelet around the wrist, also has the same effect of of shutting down the acupuncture points of the circulation, of the, sorry, the triple warmer meridian, which is a hormone meridian, which also have affects the thyroid too. It's a an observation which is, happens 100% of the time, just as a, bit, as a bit of a heads up for people who wear those types of things. Wearing a pendant will neutralise that. That's why we make our watch harmonisers to neutralise the charge coming from those types of um, devices because they do cause quite a lot of stress. So the one you just run along the meridians, just go on to, you know, on to Google and Google or whatever you're using um, Chinese meridian chart, and there's zillions of them out there. Whichever ones aren't protected, just print a copy out and just study it, and you'll see where the meridians are, where the liver meridian is, the, the kidney meridian, the, the stomach spleen meridian, and just run the meridians. And if you're sensitive, and if you do it up and down three or four times for each one, you'll actually feel really good. You'll feel really quite lift, uplifted and light. Um, okay. We won't go on for too much longer, but there's still a couple of questions coming in um, and then we'll finish up. Um, Renessa wants to know how to protect themselves from 5G and Wi-Fi when in townhouse. Um, the radiation you get in a townhouse, or, well, how would you put it? Townhouses tend to be in blocks. So if you've got one townhouse, you're going to have 10 townhouses, if you know what I mean. like. Around here, say Mornington's got a lot of townhouses, and Mornington's an old suburb with really old blocks of land, and they're being de demolished by develop developers. And they put townhouses in because you get six towns, six or eight townhouses on. You do get geoelectric current from the, the townhouses, all of them with all of them being together. It's all people stuff. That's a bigger problem than five G. Um, if you have five G in streetlights, well, then then you've got geoelectric current from the streetlights, which is another another webinar, which we I think we've done that in the past, and we've got blogs about that. 
um, your geoclins and your stellar dome will protect you from so from the protect the house and you from the geoelectric current from 5G and streetlights. It's if it's from towers, there's non-ionizing radiation, and it's not harmful. And we don't have millimetre wave in Australia. I know that. I've spoken to actual Telstra technicians who work on the 5G installations in the towers, not the people who work in the Telstra shops. They know nothing. The actual technicians, I've, I've spoken to them. And they are, they are the, the, the real deal. And they tell you, again, that there's no, no um, millimetre wave with 5G in Australia. And they back up what I say, that the towers, okay, there's a danger around them, very close to them, but the radio frequency wave is not ionising. Then that may, for some people, really stir things up and go, bullshit, you know, get on their high horse. And so I've seen studies done where they've, like there's one study done for apparently in Israel, it's quite a famous one, where they say that the people were affected for up to 500 metres around a mobile phone tower. And if you've got blinkers on and only use an RF meter, and if you've got no knowledge of beyond EMF, your assumption is going to be that the radio frequency wave has caused all these illnesses in the houses. And they doc in this, this study, they documented all these cases of, te of testicular cancer and breast cancer and this cancer and that cancer. It was really that way based. But because the blinkers were on, they were, and the awareness of all these other things was not there. They weren't taking the other forms of radiation, which we've just spoken about, which is ionizing radiation, which does cause electromagnetic stress. They weren't taking that into, into consideration. And I see that a lot. And I, I peruse from time to time other websites around Australia, which are, you know, people call themselves EMF experts. And some of them are selling, selling shielding material, which is, reduces the radio frequency meter with a the wave strength with, with a meter. However, it's reducing something that's harmless anyway. Um, and I read all this stuff and they're all going on about, you know, these people got sick there, there and there, and we put shielding up and they should be fine and the space is clear. Total rubbish. You've got to address the bioplasmic, the geoelectric currents, the earth, earth magnetic grid lines. You've got to look at the geoelectric current from the 5G if it's there. You've got to observe the solar wind patterns. Um, some countries, for example, like um, if you're talking Israel, it's, it's been a country that's had a lot of turmoil, political unrest and all sorts of stuff for a lot of years. And you do get a geoelectric current across the entire country. And I'm not picking on Israel. I'm not anti-Semitic or anything. I'm just saying related to that, that study. But, you know, South Africa's got it. A lot of Europe's got it from World War One, World War Two, because the people... Have been lots. There's lots of death everywhere. People have been severely depressed um, because of the economic and war situations, and so on. Um, New Zealand's one because of the Maori stuff that's gone on. Um, some parts of America got it. Some parts of parts of Australia have got it due to what happened to the atrocities to the ab Aboriginals. Um, so those people who study those things. Um, using and make assumptions with radio frequency meters, thinking the, ra the RF in the air is causing the, 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 the trouble or the, the illnesses in the houses or the change in the energy of the houses. It's not. It's the ionizing radiation with, with, from all these things beyond EMF. I'm not saying that your Wi-Fi and your smart meter and your digital TV, which is the most dangerous appliance in the house, which do, do generate ionising radiation, are not a problem. They are a problem, of course they are, but we're not talking about them today. That's an, another thing. Okay, um, we'll finish up now today. Thank you, everyone, for attending. We'll try and do more of these in the future. Just the thing is that sometimes we, we run out of, or I run out of ideas of, of what to talk about because we've done webinars in the past and they're on the website. I think this is going on the website. Um, but if anyone's got any ideas or wants more information on things, or if they've got an idea for another webinar, like I'm open to anything and I'm happy to share information. Um, what we're, what I'm about to announce is that for 48 hours only, we're going to offer a 10% discount code. And this discount code is, if you want to write this down, is in capital, capitals, beyond 10. And you put that discount code when you get um, uh, into the checkout. 
so it's beyond 10 in capitals. And if you want me to say it again, I don't want to repeat myself, um, but for those who have just cottoned on to what I'm saying, um, beyond 10 for the next 48 hours is your discount code for 10% discount. So thank you everyone for attending. Keep your eye out for this to go onto the, onto the website. And all, as I said, keep your eye out for, I think it's going to end up on Rumble. And we're going to talk about that other subject, which we can't talk about in this platform. But I think you all know what we're talking about. And I've got a huge amount of, around, amount of knowledge around that. And for those who are already thinking of the question of, can we protect ourselves from the biofield, from whatever we're talking about? Yes. We changed our programming on this and this and our pendants and everything last November because I realised that you get a lot of people in a building because of what's going on with the energy of the people. They drag the energy of the building, building down. You could have a, a stellar pendant on pre-November last year. It will protect you from the energy of those other people. But because when you get a lot of them, they drag the energy down, we change things so that um, we change their energy too so they don't affect you, especially the very uh, electro-hypersensitive ones who, are, who do get really knocked around about it. So thank you for attending and, and staying with us. Um, and we'll probably see you again, hopefully within another month. Thank you. Bye.